Christy asks, what are your thoughts on the current trade war between the U.S. and China? What role, if any, could Bitcoin play or how could this impact uh, Bitcoin? I honestly think it's it's very difficult to predict the uh, short-term impact of cryptocurrencies on this trade war. Um, but what is clear here is that these trade wars are happening in the context of broader currency wars. This isn't about trade. It's about exchange rates between currencies and the ability to devalue the currency without shifting the trade balance uh, ridiculously in one direction or another. So effectively what's happening is uh, large countries and federations like the European Union, Japan, China, Russia, the US, etc., are all engaging in currency manipulation in a desperate attempt to reduce their debt load by de devaluing the currency through inflation and um, allowing the currency value to slip. So when China, for example, devalues its currency, the U.S. finds its currency strengthening. And the problem with that is that, that means um, Chinese goods are more afford affordable for Americans. They're cheaper. Um, Americans buy more Chinese goods. Uh, more trade happens in the direction of uh, China. More dollars flow to uh, China, and the trade balance shifts um, in the favor of China. And so tariffs are a way to add another secret tax on people um, without actually passing any tax increases. So um, by implementing tariffs, those tariffs directly impact the cost of goods, which means they drive price inflation in goods, um, they weaken the dollar, and uh, hopefully, at least in the minds of those who are implementing these tariffs, um, they act to decrease the debt by devaluing uh, the value of the debt, the national debt in U.S. dollars. So if you owe uh, $20 trillion, and but $20 trillion today is only worth as much as $10 trillion yesterday, and then effectively you only owe $10 trillion. So the lower the value of the currency, the less your debt is. And the U.S. government is, is um, desperately trying to do that. But so is the Chinese government, and so is the Japanese government, and so is the European Central Bank. And as a result, all of these different um, nation states and federated nations are basically on a race to the bottom, trying to devalue the currency against everybody else. And when one of them devalues their currency, that only works for a short period of time, because then if all of the others devalue their currency, they're back at parity. Um, it's a relative game. Your currency is only devalued if if everybody else's currency stays strong. So that's why we call it a race to the bottom. And it's not good for the economy. Uh, protectionism never works. And the end result is that the middle class in all of these countries suffer uh, while um, the richest of the rich essentially get uh, subsidized through giant asset bubbles um, and cheap debt. So um, what's going to happen with the trade war in Bitcoin? Same thing that's been happening forever. Um, the more fiat debases itself, uh, the more that makes Bitcoin the strong uh, currency. So you can look at it as Bitcoin becoming more valuable all, over time. Of course, the other way to look at it is that uh, it's not Bitcoin that's getting more valuable. It's the U.S. dollar that's getting cheaper. Toby asks... Anti-encryption law in Australia and possible Bitcoin confiscation. Hi, Andreas. I heard you saying that you had to postpone your visit to Australia due to the new anti-encryption law that cracks down on encrypted messaging services. Very embarrassing for Australia, by the way. Couldn't a Bitcoin technically be seen as an encrypted message service to exchange money? Might this implicate for the future that citizens could be forced to provide their private keys to avoid jail, like the USA did with the gold confiscation? We know that a desperate government is capable of extreme measure in order to steal people's assets by taxation of, or confiscation. Toby, um, I had to postpone my visit to Australia because Australia passed a law that um, 
made it mandatory to provide passwords for any devices when you cross the border into Australia. And if you don't, uh, they can put you in jail for five years. Now, that means that if I go to Australia, I have to go with no devices at all uh, because I can't go into a country with my devices that have confidential material, uh, client attorney privilege material, uh, material for my companies. You know, nothing I'm ashamed of. Uh, but basically, the fundamental right of privacy that we all have um, is is basically uh, being violated by laws like this. So Australia is doing this, and I'm not going to uh, basically put my privacy at risk uh, by giving passwords to any government primarily because I don't trust governments to store data securely because they've proven again and again that they can't store data securely. It keeps leaking. So I don't want my data to leak together with the data of hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of other people. Uh, theoretically, Australia could consider uh, a Bitcoin hardware wallet as an encryption device to which you need to provide your password. Um, and if they did that, God knows what they'd do with that device. Uh, I wouldn't think that's very uh, safe. So, yeah, I mean, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, New Zealand has also passed some similar laws, but in their case, there's a monetary fine, but no jail sentence. So they'll just basically deport you if you refuse to give them passwords. Um, but uh, in Australia, it's much worse because... Uh, you do not get deported. You get put into jail. As a foreign visitor on a visa, um, you'll get put into jail if they ask you for your password and you don't uh, give it to them. So uh, I don't see any way how I could currently uh, travel to Australia to do my job without any, um, without any digital devices on me. The chances, of course, of me being actually stopped at the border and searched for that reason, pretty slim. But any chance that's not zero is bad enough for me, so I'm out. Um, it's really sad that we're seeing these laws being passed because they don't actually serve the purpose that they purport to serve.